everyone's favorite place, Menards. Which is where I'll be doing much of my build on this thing right here, because I don't have a workshop. I didn't make this clear in the first video, but I live in Chicago, and I will be building this ambulance out wherever I can, and that includes Menards parking lots, my own parking lot, the side of the road, and today, well, I found this relatively nice shady spot here at Menards, and that's going to be my build spot for today, but I want to show you how things are going. So this is the first video after I've actually done a little bit of work, but it was only a little. Let me show you what I've got done. So this is the work environment. You can see I've kind of just filled all the cabinets with tools and stuff, and yes, that's a microwave there, oddly. That's a microwave there too. There are two microwaves that will be explained in a future video. Um, but it's nice having all these cabinets. Since this is my workshop and my camper, it's going to be both at the same time. I picked up this Kori fridge here. It's actually huge. And it's interesting, it's mostly freezer. And then that little part over there is the refrigerator. And when you've got a microwave, that actually makes some sense. I've only tried it once, very briefly, it worked pretty well, but uh, I'll give a full review of that after it's had some miles. And I replaced the stereo with one of these things here. This is a Boss Elite, but it's the strange thing. It's a single DIN stereo, and it has this huge screen that goes up and down and left and right. It's actually pretty ideal. I really like that it has a volume knob. And of course, once you plug your phone into it, you've got CarPlay, and there's the Menards I'm at. You can see it does Android Auto as well, it does Bluetooth, you can hook video sources up to it. Um, I, do, I have a backup camera. It came with one. I haven't hooked it up yet because I have this one up here. It works pretty well. Sometimes it gets a little confused with what the lighting situation should be, but I'm not done playing with it, so I can't really review it just yet. Here I put in the microphone. It was actually fairly easy to run this microphone down here. This whole thing pops off, and then I was able to go down and then under the steering wheel and then there's lots of space to get back up in there so as far as putting a stereo in here it was actually pretty easy so it's like 350 bucks it's pretty inexpensive and uh, i'm pretty happy with it so if you want carplay in your rig no matter what your rig is this this boss be 10 acp is not a bad way to go and they make a nine inch one too that's a little bit smaller and just a little bit cheaper <music> See, see, I still have some residue here to get rid of. It is just difficult to remove. I've tried all kinds of chemicals on it. These are marks left by the spinning wheels, and I might come back and do that some more because it seems to make it form this mass that you can pick off. Now, I don't know if you can see here, but that used to say Faith Community Hospital. The Faith part, I've done a pretty good job of getting rid of. Community still needs some work, and I did as a test, I'd spent some extra time on the Y, and it seems like I've made some progress there. But, folks, we're talking about hours and hours of work. It is a lot of work to remove these stickers. I have not had much luck at all in the back. Now, the problem is that these are a blue sticker on top of a reflective sticker. These are both reflective materials. So that's one sticker, two sticker, three stickers. This red thing is a sticker, and then this pinstripe is two and they all use different adhesives. And I would like to keep the red because it looks fine and just remove this, but man, it's hard. So I imagine since it's the back, I'm just gonna paint that or do that stripe separate since it's such a concrete piece. The glass was easy. There was a star of life on there and I was able to get that off just fine. But behind the door, well, I'm still working on that. And here's a big problem. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. Even if you get all the adhesive off, you will find that the paint underneath the adhesive is shinier than the paint on the outside because, hey, this is a 2011. This has seen 10 years of oxi oxidization and sun damage, and this part was protected. So the only way I think that you can make these look the same, well, you can paint it or you can buff it. And, uh, well, we'll see how much effort I want to put into that. I've moved on to other things right now. My purpose for doing all that was to get it to not look like an ambulance anymore. And I was somewhat successful with that. I mean, it's always going to look like an ambulance, but at least the front doesn't actually say ambulance on it anymore. And if you come over here, you can see that's done there. Now, in the video, that the other video I made, 
You may have noticed that there was a little bit of a leak right here. Right here. No leak now. Yeah, well, there's a story about that. Now, the ambulance was in Texas. I'm in Chicago. Ooh, can't really inspect it, right? So what I did was on eBay, I put down a deposit of $500, and then I flew to Texas to inspect the vehicle. And I did. I inspected the vehicle a lot. I spent probably two hours going over the vehicle. I ran a Carfax that looked clean. The only thing that was on the Carfax, other than periodic maintenance, which was good, were a couple of recall things, some normal maintenance items, and the, the van had hit a deer, apparently, in 2014, seven years ago, and I wasn't too worried about that. And the thing was great. It, everything I checked on it was fine. The only thing that I thought was weird was this. This is the expansion tank for the coolant. Most modern vehicles have these. Nothing too exciting. This hose goes to the radiator and then the coolant, which expands as it gets hot, comes in here and sits here. And it's under pressure. Well, what happened when I opened the hood, when I was inspecting the vehicle, is the fluid was up to here. Now you can see the max is here. That's max hot. So the fluid was all the way up to here. And this plastic thing here is actually an overflow. And I noticed that as I was driving it, some of the liquid was leaking out because it was too full. Now I had chalked that up to, you know, an inexperienced lot guy. He was probably told to top off the fluids and added too much and whatever. And I was able to remove the excess fluid. It was 50 ounces. It wasn't a little bit of fluid. And I thought that was the end of it. And I drove a thousand miles to Chicago and everything was good, except there was still a little bit of coolant dripping. I thought, hmm. There shouldn't be any coolant dripping. I wonder if there's the hose leaking. So I crawled under there and looked around and didn't see anything. And I thought, well, I have to take it to the Mercedes dealer anyway, because there's some major recall work that needs to be done. The airbags, the DEF system, a bunch of stuff. And I thought, I'll just have them look for a coolant leak. I mean, how bad could it be? Well, the answer is it can be quite bad. They did the recall work. That was fine, but there was no coolant leak there was a transmission fluid leak and I was still not too concerned because it was way at the front now the transmission obviously now you know if we're looking at this here the transmissions here about and the leak was up here so you know it's got to be just a hose or, or something right and it turns out it was it was just a hose except it wasn't a Mercedes hose apparently when this vehicle hit the deer, which was up in this front corner here, it damaged those lines, so they replaced them. But they didn't take them to the Mercedes dealer to replace them. They just kind of did it on their own. And while the hoses were actually okay where they connected to the transmission cooler, well, that was bent. Okay, so now we're looking at a new transmission cooler. Except this is a Mercedes, and they're all fancy German engineers, right? So their transmission cooler is actually built in to the radiator. That's right. We're looking at a whole new radiator here. Long story short, that little coolant leak cost me $3,000. What could I have done to have avoided this? I don't know. I checked it out as best I could. The Mercedes mechanics couldn't find the leak for several days. It actually took them over a week to fix this. So if I had hired a mechanic on the spot to give the vehicle a once over, they wouldn't have caught it. And you know, when you buy a used vehicle, it's as is, there's no warranty. So this is the risk you take buying a used vehicle. And yeah, if I were more experienced, maybe I would have caught it. But the fact of the matter is I didn't. And that's why when you buy a used vehicle, you need a buffer to fix the things you don't catch. And sometimes that buffer's gotta be pretty big. Good, but I have a mystery. See this 30 amp fuse here? I pulled that out of here. And if I put it back in, what it does is it turns on these lights. Now those lights do not have a switch that I'm aware of. There's a switch here to make them high or low but there's no off, so I don't know what's going on with that. Aux lights is this one down here. Vent is that incredibly loud vent back there. Um, and then that's the air conditioning and, and the heat and all that, uh, which there's the heat, there's the air conditioning, but that only works with the engine running. So here's the mystery. If I pull that fuse again, 
the lights go out okay that's good but watch this if I come up front and turn on the rear action lights somehow that turns those lights on again now to be clear the rear action light is that bright white up there in the middle it's for the action in the rear that makes sense these lights must have two circuits going to them so yeah and you know this is this is what you run into with ambulances is you have all these mysteries because they've got all this incredible wiring all over the place and even though this is a simple one i don't have the schematic so i have to figure it all out but uh you know sometimes that's kind of fun and sometimes in figuring this stuff out you actually come up with ideas that you didn't have before so maybe something fun will come out of it one mystery that i did solve was this hole here if you remember i was kind of confused about that well look what happens when you shut the door Aha! mystery solved so that's it for this time i have more video coming your way very soon so stay tuned i hope to have it out within a day or two thanks for watching and i will catch you down the road